Hello, I'm Marites Vitug. Welcome to Rappler Talk. We're very fortunate to have with us a professor at the UP College of Law, Dante Gatmaitan, who will speak to us about the Bayanihan Law, which was passed last week, signed, passed by Congress last week and signed into law by President Duterte. Uh, this is a very timely issue because this is the document, the law that will guide the entire um, uh, plan of government to combat COVID-19. Welcome to Rappler Talk, Professor Gatmaitan, and thank you for making time. So uh, anyway, are you healthy and safe? <laughs> Yes, we're, we've been stuck in the house for But do you do online teaching? Do you teach online or are you on a semester's break? There's a, there's a directive from the chancellor to stop all uh, uh, even alternative forms of teaching because not every student has access to uh, the internet during this crisis and they, they cannot get online. So we have that. So there's no teaching going on right now. Okay, so I'll just ask first with the basics, Professor uh, Gatmaitan. What is this Bayanihan Law all about? Ano ba ito? Kasi bakit kailangan ng emergency powers to combat COVID-19? Maybe you can walk us just a summary of the law. The law uh, grants the president certain powers to be able to deal with this uh, this health emergency. Um, merong mga powers that are are being criticized because they are already provided for by other laws and there are other powers granted there which the president doesn't i can already exercise just by being the president of the the philippines um the the law is actually um actually has a constitutional basis there are three types of emergency powers and the first one is the one that uh Unfortunately, we're very familiar with, and that's the the commander in chief powers, and with uh, the imposition of martial law and the suspension of the writ of habeas corpus. And that doesn't apply here because there's no invasion or rebellion to speak of. Now, the second one is the one that's being invoked by uh, by Congress here, the second and the third actually. So during uh, an emergency like this one. The president can be given emergency powers um, for a limited period of time, and and that's what we have now. Essentially, a list of additional powers or reiterated powers, uh, uh, supposedly given to the president to allow him to address the the coronavirus uh, pandemic. So, how come? Sabi ng mga ibang critics, how come yung mga ibang bansa wala namang ginawang special law? to combat COVID-19? Or are you aware of any other country that uh, executed or their parliaments passed a special law? There is one country, I just say, I, I, um, I cannot remember which one at the moment. Uh, but the, the criticism there is that the, the president has asked for a, a, a law that is so broad mm -hmm. uh, um, and it's being criticized as an attempt to uh, suppress opposition to, to, to that regime. It, it, it's kind of a, a, one of those strong arm countries. And um, and our solution, unfortunately, seems to be um, for more money to be used by the, the government. And and for that reason, I think some members of the government think it's necessary for for this law because a lot of some of the provisions here really uh, are about freeing up a lot of funds to be used to uh, address this, uh, this crisis. Uh, so your main purpose of this law is really for the, to facilitate release of funds. Um, yun talaga ba ang key na special power granted to the president under this law? I, it looks like it's a major component of the law. Right? So we have some provisions I said that are probably unnecessary because we already have laws that give the president power. RA, for example, Republic Act 11332, which was written precisely to address a crisis, uh, a health crisis like the one that we have now. Now, there are some provisions which I think um, uh, are probably necessary just to clarify if the president has this, this kind of a power. 
you know, like uh, extending deadlines for the submission of uh, uh, government documents, like in the taxes natin, and nobody's complaining about that one, right? <laughs> so, may mga ganun. Can he can he provide for emergency funds? Yung mga, yung mga yan, just to be safe, let's let's give him a, a statutory basis. But then the rest, I think, have to do, as I said earlier, about freeing up these uh, uh, these funds. And and, there, and and the effect, I think, is is to is is, is unconstitutional because it, it goes to the extent of realigning the budget. So there are a lot of provisions on opening up funds, but but there's one that really uh, uh, makes me uncomfortable because I think it's it's goes beyond uh, what the constitution envisioned. Oh, so you mean uh, that this law can be questioned? Of course, this is an emergency law. Pero ang sinasabi nyo na unconstitutional yung pagrealign ng funds? Yes, because there is a specific provision in the constitution that uh, prevents Congress from enacting any law. That, allow, that allows the president to realign the budget. And what they did here was um, authorize the president to, to do exactly that. I, so I think regardless of the emergency, we cannot use a law. We cannot use the you know a law uh, on the pretext of addressing an emergency to circumvent constitutional uh, provisions. Uh, so how can, how can the Without this law, how can the president, uh, kunyari wala itong bayanihan law, paano niya i-facilitate yung release ng funds for this emergency? Well, meron nga ng other laws like uh, yung, yung sa 11332. Uh, and part of that already says the president can ensure the availability of funds. Um, meron tayong mga laws on emergency procurement. Yes. So you know, can already be used to release funds. Um, and that's why some of us really don't see why you need to go to this extent. Uh, to, if the only problem really is the money, then release it. If I'm not mistaken, I think I read somewhere that the, uh, or I heard the, press, the health secretary say, uh, they were given an additional budget by, by Congress. So that's another remedy, you know, if you have the money, all you have to do is enact a supplemental budget to give the, the, the proper agencies the money that they, they need. So, I'm not downplaying the significance or the importance of the, the emergency, yeah? mm -hmm. but I'm just saying that um, I think there are already uh, sufficient ways to do this without, without uh, you know, that attempting <laughs> the, the limits of the Constitution. Okay, so this law is only good for three months, right? Unless Congress extends it. Pwede ba yun, um, sabi nila, unless Congress extends the law, it ends in three months. So are you, at least is that a um, source of comfort for you? <laughs> it's only a three-month law. Oh, the, the Constitution says that uh, it's for a limited period. And then to prevent the president from holding on to emergency powers. What the Constitution says is, unless it can be with, with it's, unless it's withdrawn sooner by Congress, by resolution, ah, hindi na law, kasi mahirap yung law, eh, mas maraming, you know, it, it's a it's a longer process. So by resolution, they can withdraw it before the three months are up, or it terminates upon the adjournment of Congress. Yun lang nakalagay. Yes, yes. But but I'm not I'm not I'm pretty sure. If it came, if it came down to a, a, a case, the, 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 the courts might actually justify an extension. Because it's not even You understand? The, the Constitution doesn't say anything about extending this, and um, it, it looks like this kind of a uh, crisis will exceed uh, three months. Yes. Yes. So, so it probably will be upheld in any case. So, uh, despite this uh, unconstitutionality of realignment of funds by the president, why do you think did they have did Congress ca have to come up with this Bayanihan law? Um, why? I mean, when you said there are other laws that cover it already, although this was pointed out also by 
uh, uh, Edsel Lagman that it's not necessary. But why do you think was this uh, enacted? There's another emergency power that uh, that is in the Constitution. It's the young takeover powers of the president. So, kailangan kasi ng we need a law. We need Congress to enact a law to give uh, the president that power. And in this case, it was used to allow the president to take over, direct the operations of medical facilities, hospitals, etc., and uh, take over the, the transportation. Mm-hmm. That's fine. The, con- the Constitution recognizes certain exceptions, but it is uh, att- uh, uh, attended by uh, public purpose, I think, the, the phrase means. Pero kailangan ng matas eh. So, that one, in other words, this, this law actually invokes two separate emergency powers of the, uh, the president. So that, that's also needed. And uh, I'm, I'm, they could have stood by their guns, you know, and the, because you remember the, the earlier drafts of the, the takeover clause really riled up the, 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 the public because it was so broad. They could have just said well, the Constitution authorizes it, you know, but they, they backed down. And they limited the coverage of that the takeover, and they limited uh, they they put restrictions diba, on the on the actual use. Kumbaga, it's for the transportation of medical personnel. Yes. So naglagay talaga sila ng mga restrictions. So you know, uh, if we saw the earlier drafts of this this law and the final outcome, that's a reason to be to be happy because it could have been so much more. Uh, in the beginning, there were more, yes. more constitutional issues uh, would have been raised at that at, if we had adopted the, the earliest versions. You know, after reading the law, actually, nakita ko maraming provisions actually on public health. Parang that's the major component of the law, and that should be under the health secretary's um, mandate, right? So, uh, sabi dito. If I can just read a portion, it says the law, the primary need is to mitigate, if not contain, the transmission of COVID-19. So I was quite surprised that uh, there is a substantial provision on on this, and it says to immediately and amply provide health care, including medical tests and treatments to COVID-19 patients. So, yun yung declaration of policy, pero ang nag implement nito is a retired general as as directed by the president. So are you concerned about this na may gap? Parang may gap. The law is heavy on public health, yet ang mag implement is a, a, a retired general. Hindi DOH ang, key fig, ang visible and key figure. Well, the Congress could have provided that the, the efforts under this law will be directed by the Secretary of Health. But the president, in previous uh, statements, has expressed faith in, you know, military thinking. Uh, you know, for, for appointing a lot of former military personnel, and he's, he he talked about uh, the, uh, the efficiency of the way they think. And in the president's mind, probably I'm guessing he's really more concerned about uh, getting things done quickly. And but it doesn't prevent. It doesn't prevent the the implementers of this law from relying with or, co- or coordinating with health personnel as they should, because yes. it's, as you pointed out, this is not a military operation. So if they if they treated it like uh, simply as a military operation, then we probably will have difficulty uh, addressing the the spread of this virus. So they should they really should still. Uh, communicate with health experts. Okay, good. Uh, and also, with this law, the president can direct the trade and industry secretary to, can he do that to compel manufacturing companies to you know, uh, produce uh, medical equipment like masks, PPEs? Pwede ba yun nagawin na compel yung manufacturing companies? For example, I don't know. Maybe there are medical companies, and they could retool to to produce uh, equipment, medical equipment that's much needed. Have you seen the DTI do this already? 
No, I've never, I've never seen it. Actually, to be honest, parang hindi ko nakita yung provision na yun. So, <laughs> ah, nakita ko. <laughs> no, no, there is, no, there is no provision about, I think, ordering them, but it could happen because of this law, right? Now the president I can direct. It. No. I doubt it because the that would fall under the, the, the takeover power of the president, and oh. they limited the takeover power already to medical facilities and uh, 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 transportation. I see. So okay. It, so how, how how can how can this law help or um, meet the demand? For example, then, kung hindi pwede yon, kasi takeover pala yon. The president can compel the, the Bureau of Customs to facilitate the entry yung mga ating imported medical equipment. Yun, yun siguro. Yes, and, but you don't need an emergency power to do that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Really? Well, he, so, he's the president and he, he's, uh, he has control over the Bureau of Customs. He, you don't need a, uh, you know, an emer emergency powers to ensure the speedy distribution of uh, medical facilities. You're the president. You can do that. Okay. So uh, I was wondering because, uh, for example, San Miguel Corporation mm -hmm. volu volunteered or voluntarily uh, decided to produce alcohol, you know, additional supplies. So at hindi pala kailangan ng uh, emergency powers dito. Pag ganito, kasi uh, the DTI can also maybe um, work with a the private sector to do this is that possible right yes and and they're not even being asked to they're just volunteering uh, uh, these changes in production because they're as much a part of this effort than uh, as the government is so they they know they have to do something and you don't have to strong arm them into uh, mm -hmm. you know doing what you want so ano sa yo ang apart from you said unconstitutionality of of realigning funds Ano pa ang ibang, you see other red flags dito? Can you um, uh, let alert us what we should watch out for as citizens, as journalists? Yes, the, the other provision that's causing a lot of concern is yung penal provisions, particularly on the spread of fake information. It's, a, it's not even fake news. Eh? You know, the law, uh, in fact, uh, has identified a, a crime but has not defined it mm. it's broad yung, yung provision and it can be used it's a yung kind of a provision that can be uh, abused because it's so broad but but the, in, you know the good news is they've qualified it they've qualified it uh, was it meant to cause chaos yes, you know, yes, yes. Like, Mahirap pa i-prove eh. Pero, you know, the, the, you might prevail eventually dun sa, sa litigation. But the fact is, they can cite that provision and say, we can arrest you. Kasi you're spreading false information. And the problem there is, the way we use social media sometimes is, by, is uh, you know, to, to protest. Diba? We, we use satire, we use humor, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's our right to protest no matter what the situation is. We, ha we have to complain because we're citizens diba? and we're taxpayers. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, the government can say that that's, every time you criticize them, that's false information. So, uh, mm -hmm. we can go people. So, dito sa law, walang nakadirect na responsibility to a specific agency to determine kung ano yung false information na nag-create ng chaos, right? Ito sa, hindi naman sinabi uh, the office of um, the press secretary or the spokesperson. Wala. There's, so anyone from government, any government agency can flag information that's supposedly uh, misleading or false and leads to chaos? Ganun ba yun? Uh, I imagine department will be the one making that determination. Oh, so, so DOJ can flag that and then uh, who who starts to, who makes the case? It's DOJ which will prosecute. I think anyone can file a complaint, I guess. So if you have enemies, <laughs> thank you. 
ang kailangan pala dito kasi trusted. We need to trust pala our government if we don't trust them. Uh, anyway, but that's a good point about a red a, a red flag, which is really, uh, we should all be aware of. And dito naman sa law na ito, ano ang impact sa local government units? So they are given autonomy. At the same time, they're also warned about abuses. So what's your take on this? Yung, the autonomy of local governments goes only so far as Congress allows it to begin with. So walang blanket autonomy to, be, to speak of that would allow them to do whatever they want to do. Now, there are already laws that limit the powers of local governments when it comes to health emergencies, including the local government code and the tong tabi natin na 11332. And uh, under the local government code, the president can assume supervision of local government efforts to address a health emergency. Um, and in the in RA11332, there is a provision there that um, allows the, make, uh, requires the uh, establishment of work, a uh, strong working relationship with local governments to address a, a health crisis. Uh, and I think on the part of the government, there is some some value to making sure that the efforts of uh, local governments are coordinated mm -hmm. the nature of this, kind, this this emergency. It's a virus, it's spreading fast, and I think in their minds, think you can't just uh, go it alone. So if there's uh, quarantine in one city, it's rendered useless if you don't have a quarantine in yours. So there's no justification for uh, for uh, making sure that they comply with nationally, uh, uh, you know, defined procedures. But it's also limited to, ano, di ba? to uh, quarantines. Yes, yes. And uh, tinitingnan ko uli yung, meron nang lumabas pala, Professor, na emergence and uh, guidelines for implementation. Nilabas na na executive secretary. But uh, if you go over it, it just lifts from the law. It lifts heavily from this law and just tells the OH, this is your part. DTI, this is yours. Uh, Pinakamahabang list nga sa DOH. They really have the burden uh, to, to implement the law. And then the rest, may DTI, may uh, budget, Department of Budget, malaki din. So it just, the implementation guidelines just reflect the law. So wala akong nakitang... Uh, anything extraordinary that needs the military. So yun lang, as we said earlier, pinag-usapan natin yun din yung uh, parang it causes uh, concern among among us. And what's your advice? Uh, today, Monday, as we rec record this, it's March 30. Ito na yung first Monday after the law was passed. Shall we expect already a report? Sabi ng law, to submit a report every Monday of the week to the Oversight Committee in Congress. So, is it fair to, to expect this Monday, March, today, March uh, 30? Yes, I think it is. I think, <laughs> I think they, they, they found the, the necessity of this law into our heads. So, uh, we can call them out and ensure that they comply with it. Because, because you know, we've been talking about the amount of money uh, that this law releases to the, the president, and uh, uh, we have a right to know how it's being spent, if it, and how it's being used to address this this uh, crisis. Yes, you're right. In fact, yun nga yung uh, people are expecting uh, the report to be made public. So the law doesn't say kung public document to, but we will assume that these are public documents, right? The reports that will be given to Congress? Um, I would assume that they are because generally we are entitled to know uh, under the Constitution, you know, to know about these kinds of uh, details. And there are very few exceptions uh, recognized by, you know, by the, the courts. Military secrets, for example, di naman pwedeng in Bulgaria and so on. And yes, what else are exceptions ba dito sa public documents? I, you know, pag, uh, we have cases where the court has said, while 
it's negotiating a treaty, you 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 know you you yeah. you, you yeah. Mga commercial, well, mga commercial treaties na yan. You don't have a right to find out what the heck is going on. Even if I, you know, you disagree, that's the that's the ruling. Okay. So dito naman okay. wala. Walang national security okay. implications to. Yes. I I would think it, uh, I would think it should be regarded as a public document. Okay. On that note, uh, thank you very much, Professor Dante Gatmaitan. And I would just like to just remind our viewers and listeners that uh, every Monday, every Monday of the week, magsasubmit ho yung Office of the President ng report sa Oversight Committee ng Congress. And we have a right to know and to have access to these documents. Kasi that's where the report on how the billions of pesos in public funds, that's how we will know how they, where they went and how they were spent in this a uh, very difficult time and we all have to respond to this emergency. Again, thank you, Professor Gatmaitan, and we will keep in touch and continue this conversation. And thank, thank you as well to our listeners and viewers.